how U.S. Navy drops massive aircraft carrier anchor at full speed. Anchors have existed for as long as ships, for many good reasons. The purpose of anchors, which are often constructed of heavy metal, is to secure the ship to the ocean floor. Even though there are various different designs, most have two or more flukes, or hooks, that grasp the sea floor and stop the boat from drifting in choppy weather or strong winds. Expectedly, one of the basic principles of anchoring is that the larger the ship, the larger the anchor must be as a result. A giant anchor and chain are needed to 1,000-foot-long, 100,000-ton aircraft carriers. A common aircraft carrier anchor has a chain that is around 1,440 feet long and measures about 30,000 pounds given the importance of their function. These parts must be frequently evaluated using procedures like the anchor drop test. Massive ships like aircraft carriers have a powerful mechanical system that is instated throughout the ship and stops the anchor from being simply thrown overboard. The hundreds of feet of the chain are stored in the chain locker, which is the lowest room when the ship is at sea. A shaft links the chain locker and chain to the carrier. A shaft links the chain locker and chain to the windlass chamber. There is a windlass room present at the bow and at the stern of the aircraft carriers, which often have two anchors. The anchor is dropped and elevated as it spins in each chamber, utilizing a substantial winch known as a windlass. It contains a special drums given the name Wildcats that works as a braking device when the anchor is dropped, besides being used to support the anchor. According to a laborer, the aim of the anchor drop test is to make certain that the anchor is operating properly. With the Wildcats interlocked, you lower it to a level below the water, test it, and then elevate it again. You release it, let it fall freely, stop it, set the brake so that it has a specific amount of pay, and then you redo the process to a different depth, which would be 30 fathoms. After that, we elevated the anchor again, moved the very fathom mark back around the Wildcat drop, set the brake once more, and if it settles within two particular distances, we are good to go. Although they are generally composed of great strength steel anchors and anchor chains are subject to stress when used. The combination of friction during descending and hoisting and subjection to corrosive seawater can enfeeble the chain links and may lead to fracture. Because of this, anchor chains sometimes have to be repaired both at the docks and during sailing. A procedure called a manual check is usually used to do this. This will be completed in the windlass room or the chain locker while the ship is sailing, which can be very tough. The complete chain can be pulled out of the dock when in port to evaluate each link individually, making certain there are no weak spots, cracks, or other issues that could lead the anchor to failing is the aim. This necessitates inspecting each link in the shackle along with tightening any loose pins that link them. The anchor isn't the sole component of the aircraft carrier that needs routine maintenance and inspection. These vessels have tons of moving parts, all of which need to operate perfectly for the vessel to carry out its duty. Every square inch of these ships is crucial to their operation, from the elevators that transport planes from the hangar to the deck to the catapults and retractable blast shields. The United States Air Force has been constructing land-based arresting gear systems for many years. The Air Force has inspected many alternative arresting methods throughout the years, including safety barrels and nets. The BAC-12, or Barrier Arresting Kit, is the kind that will be utilized the most extensively and is fairly akin to those fitted aboard ships. This device comprises a steel line that is prolonged over the runway and is supported by some little wheels akin to landings on aircraft carriers. Airplanes have deployed tow hooks that can seize the line during landing. A multi-disc rotating energy absorber, which is linked to that line, helps in the safety and quick stopping of an airplane. For all pilots to be trained in operating these short-distant landings, just a while ago, the Air Force ordered training on the BAC-12. We are certifying our BAC-12 systems, the aircraft arresting system, stated the senior airman Khalil Cox of the 23rd Wing Civil Engineer Squadron of the United States Air Force. The BAC-12 system catches aircraft. Its important lies in the fact that if we don't have a system like this in place and an aircraft emergency happens while the aircraft is in flight, this system will stop the aircraft from perhaps crashing, saving both the pilot's life and the aircraft. Consequently, when a tailhook aircraft encounters an in-flight emergency, the tailhook strikes down, catches the pendant, and pulls the tape, causing the brake to hold the aircraft to slow down and ultimately come to a halt. 
the back 12s kinetic braking system must be kept in extremely good condition to bring a jet supporting tens of thousands of pounds to a protected stop in an emergency. The huge strain that landings like this one position on the various parts entail extreme caution to stop the line from breaking. The pilot, airplane, and ground staff would be in great risk if it snapped. For that reason, maintenance and maintenance training is ordinary at airfields equipped with BAC-12 throughout the world. One of the chief methods for attaining this is by incessantly testing the strength and durability of the cable using a tractor or other huge powerful vehicle. Technicians can evaluate the energy absorber's performance as the line is pulled to make certain it is functioning as planned and administer any required repairs. Any military organization's aim must prioritize aircraft safety, specifically during the extremely dangerous landing process. In spite of the high cost of the vehicles, their true worth is placed in the lives of the crew members and pilots who drive them. Identical to this, to avert damage during mooring or in the case of a crisis at sea, aircraft carriers and other huge boats must be capable of anchoring themselves to the ocean floor.